Hey guys, what is up? My name is Jimmy and welcome to my new video. So in this video what I'll be doing is going over in detail about the kinds of techniques and things I usually do while I'm editing my car photography photos. So as you can see I'll be using this photo that's in front of you here and if you didn't see the video I made a couple of months ago I pretty much retouched this from start to finish but I sped it up. So what I'll be doing in this video is quickly going over the kinds of things I did in that video just so you can get a bit of an idea about how I usually retouch them and the kinds of things I usually do. Um, so this video is going to be a little bit long and apologies for the really loud tapping on the keyboard it's just I got a mechanical keyboard now uh, so you probably hear the keys tapping a lot more. Okay so let's jump right into it. As you can see we're here in Adobe Lightroom 4 and we'll be starting off into this and moving over into Photoshop CS6 a bit later on in the tutorial. Now don't worry if you have a different version it should easily be able to translate into any of them. Okay so this should be kind of what it looks like once we're done in Lightroom and then we'll go over and do the retouching over in Photoshop and some final enhancements. Okay so let's just reset this and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is level out the photo. As you can see it's a bit crooked here on the horizon and we obviously want to make that nice and straight. So clicking the crop overlay up here, selecting this little spirit level icon here and just clicking and dragging across the horizon is a very good way just to level out the photo. And then getting rid of that and as you can see a perfectly straight horizon. Okay so let's take a look at how I shot this photo. You can see I used a Canon 24-105L lens on my 5D Mark III and I shot this at 1 80th of a second, f5.6 and ISO 100 and 35mm. Now you might be wondering why not f8 or f11 and the reason for that is I actually forgot my tripod on this one shoot so I had to kind of bring down the aperture a little bit just so I could keep it at a decent shutter speed. Um, now alternatively I could have raised my ISO but the higher you go with your ISO the more quality you lose and the more dynamic range you lose and everything like that and uh, both of those are very important for car photos in my opinion. Okay so let's start off with some adjustments. Now the way I'm doing this is I do have all of the settings already uh, pre-written down on my second monitor here uh, so that just means I won't be able to fiddle around so I will just be entering exact values most of the time and then I will explain why I'm doing each one uh, where it needs to be explained. Okay so starting off with the white balance I usually start off by going into auto and that way you just get a bit of a sense of where the program thinks you should be. Um, however this car is meant to be exactly white and as you can see it was a bit blue before and now it's a bit yellow so it's gone a bit too far in the opposite direction. Now the values that are working for me is 6450 and uh, 17 for the tint. So now you can see the car is exactly white so we know that we have the correct white balance. Now obviously these values are going to vary depending on your photo. Okay so we don't need to touch the exposure since we got that right in camera. I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast to it so plus 10. Now if you're wondering how to adjust the values really quickly by increments of 5 like that, uh, just hold your mouse over the slider and press the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard and you should be able to adjust them like that. Okay so now what I'm going to do is bring down the highlights to negative 45 and then I'm going to bring up the shadows to 35, the whites to 10 and the blacks to 10. So taking a look at what we just did by toggling before and after you can see I've pretty much just brought out a bit of detail in the shadow here, brought back a bit of detail in the sky which you can't really see just yet and got rid of some of the highlights around the photo. Um, so essentially we're giving it a bit of a HDR look and that way we're just getting a lot of detail out of the photo uh, and that's how I like doing it. Okay so from there we're going to move down to this present column here and bring up the clarity to 30 just to bring a bit of detail into it and vibrance by 15. Okay so that's pretty much it for the base adjustments. We're going to skip tone curve, hue saturation luminance and split toning and go down to detail. Okay so now for detail what I'll do is enter a sharpness amount of 70, a radius of 2, a detail of 36 and a masking of 53. Now I might be wondering how the best way to sharpen your photos is and the way I do it is by holding down the alt key while adjusting the settings. So for masking for example if I hold down alt and use the slider you can see it's showing you where is being sharpened and where isn't so obviously the white parts are being sharpened and the black parts aren't. Um, so this is a good way to make sure that you're not sharpening areas that don't need to be sharpened. So here you can see would be too much because we're starting to sharpen uh, the shed in the background, we're starting to sharpen things in the sky 
as well as the side of the car where there's really no detail. Um, so by holding Alt, you can really refine your sharpening and get it to a point that's going to work well for you. And the same applies for detail as well as radius. Um, so that's a good amount of sharpening there. And now we're just going to add a little bit of noise reduction in, so about plus 20. And moving down, one final thing we're going to do is go into Lens Corrections, Manual, and add a very slight vignette, and bring the midpoint to, to zero. Okay, so there we go. If you toggle before and after by hitting the backslash key, uh, you can see we have a little bit of an improvement. Okay, so that is pretty much it for all of our adjustments. However, what we're going to do now is move on to doing some adjustment brushes and some graduated filters. Uh, so we'll start off with the graduated filters quickly and a couple of things I do to almost all of my car and landscape photos is darken the foreground. Now I'll explain why I think this is a good idea in just a second. So we're going to grab our graduated filter tool up here or by pressing M and just bring our exposure down to maybe 1.4 negative 1.4 sorry and from there we're just going to click and drag up and then we're going to click new and we're going to darken the sky a little bit so I'm going to bring this down to negative 1.9 and contrast we're going to bring up to 60 and down to saturation up to 25 and we're going to click and drag this down like so just adjust that a little bit and maybe even tilt it a little bit just to get it off the top of that shed mostly. Okay, so it's obvious why I darken the sky to bring some detail back in. However, with the foreground, some of you might be wondering why I choose to darken it. Now, the reason behind it is I think it's a really good way to kind of draw your attention into the photo. Um, so if we delete that for a second, you can see it looks a bit boring down here. There's a lot of foreground. However, if we add that graduated filter, you can see it kind of draws your attention into the car more makes the ground look a bit better down here and overall I think it just helps the photo look a little bit better overall. Um, so I do that on most of my car photos as well as most of my landscape photos. Um, so it's very subtle but it's a good effect in my opinion. Okay so that is it for graduated filters and now moving over to adjustment brushes. Now another thing I do to pretty much all of my photos, all of my car photos sorry, is brighten up the car. However since we got a white car obviously it doesn't need brightening. But if we take a look at this side of the car, this shadowed area here is actually quite a bit darker than anything else on the car. So what we're going to do is just brighten that up a little bit by adding a 0.6 exposure here and just painting over that area. Uh, pretty rough job, obviously, take your time with it. You can hold Alt to subtract out of that area. And um, obviously spend your time with these adjustments, I'm just rushing through it a bit for the sake of the tutorial. Okay, so the next adjustment brush we're going to do is actually enhancing some of the details. So this is another thing I do on all my car photos, and for this we're going to add a highlight value of negative 20 and a clarity value of about 30. Now from here what we're going to do is zoom right into the car, and what I do with this brush is go over all of these harsh lines on the car here. Now obviously take your time especially with this one because if you stuff up it will be very noticeable. Um, but just paint over all of these really harsh lines on the car and effectively what that's going to do is make them look like they're popping out even more than they actually are and this is just going to kind of make your photo and your car stand out a little bit more. So it might not be too noticeable in the video, however, yeah, it does make quite a big difference in my opinion. Uh, so you can even go over just the... Uh, edges of the window here. Now you might be wondering why I did a negative 20 on highlights and the reason for that is if we just do clarity you can see it brightens up the areas quite a bit so that negative 20 on the highlights just kind of evens it out a little bit and uh, that's going to vary depending on what car you're actually doing. Okay so now that we're finished with that we're actually done in Lightroom 4 for now so what we're going to do is right click go edit in and Photoshop CS6. If you don't have that option there, just export it like usual and import it into Photoshop. Okay, so what I'm going to do in the Photoshop side of this tutorial is just go over how I retouch the photos, what I decide to leave out and what I decide to keep, and then just go over some final touches I usually do in Photoshop. Okay, so to start off with retouching, you can either do this on an entirely separate blank layer, or you can just duplicate it and do it on that. Um, so what I'm going to do is just do it on a duplicated layer, uh, for this example, but you can do it whichever way that you think is better. 
So duplicate your layer by pressing Ctrl J on your keyboard, double click the name and we'll call this one Retouch. Now the tools I usually use consist of the clone stamp tool that you can see here and the healing brush tool. Um, so starting off with the healing brush tool, what I usually retouch out is anything that doesn't add to the photo or anything that could draw your attention away from the car. Uh, so for example, this big pole here is right in the middle of the photo and it's kind of attention grabbing. Maybe this pole over here, um, maybe this person in the bright jacket, this bright orange little mark here, and then just a bit of these like oil spots and dirt spots on the ground. So by holding the Alt key with the healing brush tool, we can sample an area and just go over it like that. Um, now I know people usually say keep it as small as possible, um, but for something on bitumen like this that doesn't really have any kind of specific texture, it's all kind of random looking and it's all over the place, it doesn't really matter too much, everything's going to blend very well anyway. Um, also I retouch out some of these reflections here on the car that you can see. Um, luckily this was a white car so the reflections are minimal compared to a dark car um, but just think about that if there's any major reflections that are easy to retouch out then you might want to consider giving it a go. Um, okay so quickly I'll just show you how to retouch out something that's say behind a fence like this. Now the way I usually do it is you obviously have to stick to the lines of this fence so the easiest way to do this is sample this exact spot here and you can see if we move this over now, you can see the sample in the middle of my cursor there. We can move it over the already existing fence. And now as long as we draw there, uh, you can see it's going to match up perfectly since it all you know, is in the one area. The fence doesn't change. Uh, again, very simple, very quick. And there we go. Um, so moving on to something like this pole, obviously it's very simple. It's just in the sky. Um, now the clone stamp tool and the healing brush tool here sometimes take a couple of turns to uh, get looking good. Um, so it might not work out the first time very well. That one turned out very well. Um, so we'll just fix that little area up there. And fix that one up. Now if you're unsure about whether your retouch looks good or not, if you can see a little bit of smudging somewhere or something like that, the best way to go about it is, you know, if you've got, you know, online friends or friends nearby or family or something that can just come and have a look at your photo. Um, yeah, just ask them to say, does anything in this photo look out of place? That's what I usually say. And if they say no or if they spot something, then, yeah, you know if you'll have to fix something or not. Um, so just keep working at it like this. It is a bit time consuming sometimes. And, um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, if you've got something complex, you know, spend your time on it because you don't want something, you know, you don't want someone seeing that you've retouched a big pole out because, yeah. So then we'll quickly just do this part. And there we go. Um, so that's the before and after. You can see it makes a big difference just getting rid of those couple of little marks. Okay, so one of the last things I do in Photoshop, which can actually be done in Lightroom if you'd prefer, is lighten around the car. Now, I'll show you why I do this in just a moment. So we'll go down here and create a new curves adjustment and just brighten this up a tiny bit like so. Hold Alt and press Backspace to fill our mask with our primary color, which is black. And then press X to bring up white, which is our primary color. Press B to bring up our brush tool, make it bigger, make sure the hardness is zero. And then just go ahead and kind of paint over your car a little bit, bring up the opacity and just like that just paint around the base of the car and now obviously go back to black by pressing X and get it off the car we don't want to brighten up the actual car itself okay so that's a really quick job but if I toggle that on and off you can see what it's done if you can see it's kind of acting as a vignette just for the car now obviously if you spend a bit more time on it you're gonna look you're gonna get it looking better than that but effectively what it's doing is it's brightening just the area around the car so your attention should go a little bit more to the car and not so much on the road here. Now obviously you don't have to do this, that's just something I do occasionally which I think helps, which I think helps quite a bit. Um, okay, so the final thing I usually do in Photoshop is my lighting effect. So if you're not sure about that, you can, uh, I'll put up the final photo here and you can see a couple of the examples of my lighting effect. 
and I actually did a tutorial on it a couple of months ago, so check out a link for that on the screen now or in the description, and um, yeah, you can learn how to do it there. Okay, so that pretty much brings this tutorial to an end. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope this helped you out a little bit. Sorry if it was a bit long and a bit of rambling, or if I was talking really quick. Um, I can't help these things, but yeah, thank you for watching, and if you enjoy, please hit that like button to help my channel out, and you can check out my other tutorials or subscribe for future ones. So thank you very much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.